26 American families caught in the crosshairs of a political fight. Mothers and fathers, husbands and wives, all denied government help to fund funerals for the loved ones they lost who were serving our country. A solemn government promise broken. This was the scene today at Dover Air Force Base in Delaware as the bodies of the fallen heroes returned home. Defense Secretary Chuck Hagel paid his respects, and he announced late today that the Pentagon had found a fix to the problem. But there are new signs of more trouble coming, this time for veterans. We have two reports tonight, starting with ABC's senior national correspondent, Jim Avila. Poignant images have shut down day nine, a lone patriotic volunteer mowing the lawn and trimming trees in front of Lincoln in advance of a weekend veterans convention. While at Dover Air Force Base, the shutdown hits America's bravest, fallen heroes, 26 killed in action in Afghanistan or on military bases at home since the shutdown. Their families denied the $100,000 so-called death gratuity. The four heroes brought home today, all killed over the weekend in an IED attack. Sergeant Patrick C. Hawkins of Carlisle, Pennsylvania. Sergeant Joseph Peters of Springfield, Missouri. PFC Cody Patterson of Philomath, Oregon. And First Lieutenant Jennifer M. Moreno of San Diego. Her friends and family forced to raise money to pay for her funeral. She sacrificed you know, for the country, for her family. Why wouldn't that have been taken care of? There is no excuse. The outrage heard, and late today, the Pentagon announced on orders of the president a contract with a civilian charity to pay the death benefit immediately. When I heard about this story, I told the Department of Defense, uh, within our administrative powers, uh, we should be able to get that fixed. This hearing will come to order. But a more widespread problem remains unsolved. Veterans Affairs Secretary Eric Shinseki warning Congress today more than 5 million military veterans and their families won't get November benefit checks if the shutdown continues. Georgia Eve served in Korea. Her military pension is all she lives on today. If I took care of my soldiers where they take care of their constituents, we would have lost the war. But as veterans and military families stress over the shutdown, there is still a place where Congress, at least, can get away from it all. No worries, the Senate and House gyms are open. Although some complain on the radio, they have to bring their own towels. There's no towel service? No towels. No, and so we're doing our own laundry down there. Do and and, ever, seriously, and we, pay, we pay a fee. Only essential federal facilities are supposed to stay open during the shutdown. And as one senator put it today, a fit Congress is important, but essential? His advice was, shut down the gyms until the madness ends. George? Probably not alone in that. Okay, Jim, thanks. Let's get more now from ABC's Chief White House Correspondent Jonathan Carl. And John, no surprise, the disgust with Washington just keeps piling up. Oh, that's right, George. And Republicans are taking most of the blame in recent polls, but the president isn't doing that well either. Take a look at the latest poll from the Associated Press. The president's approval rating at 37 percent. That matches his lowest ever. As for Congress, look at this. 5% approve of Congress's job performance. George, with the margin of error, that could be as low as 1%. Unbelievable. You'd think with numbers like that, they'd be scrambling for a solution. That's right. Now, I am hearing more talk of proposals about a short-term increase in the debt ceiling, maybe just a couple of months, just really delaying all of this. Uh, but, George, the president invited all of the House Republicans to the White House tomorrow. They refused, said they will only send the leaders. That prompted a pretty sharp response from the press secretary saying the president thought it was important to talk directly to the members who forced this economic crisis on the country. This does not sound like a group on the verge of a compromise. Not right away. Okay, John Carl, thanks very much.